What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender modifier tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to check out the Build modifier, which is a modifier that allows us to basically animate our objects um, face by face coming into place almost like they're being built. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so on the surface this is a pretty simple modifier to use. So all you need to do is be in object mode, then go over into your modifier settings or properties, and then click the drop down and we want to go look for the build modifier. And so you can apply that to geometry inside of Blender. And so what that's going to do is basically over a certain number of frames, which you can set over here, that's going to take your object and it's going to bring it in face by face. And so this is really set based on the faces inside of your model. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. But first of all, if I drag this over to the left, then I drag it to the right, notice how the faces of my Bonnie model are going into place one at a time over a hundred frames. So you can use this in order to basically set things basically coming into being um, from nothing. So a couple other things about this. So not only can you use this to make things appear, if you click on reversed, it's gonna deconstruct your mesh instead of constructing your mesh. So if I was to click play, for example, you can see how my mesh is gonna go away a little bit at a time, just like this. And so this is really controlled a lot by the number of faces inside of your model. So let's say for example, that we have a simple plane like this one. So I'm just gonna tab into edit mode. So you can see how if we look at this, this just has four corners, right? Well, if we were to tab back into object mode and apply a modifier to this. So if we apply the build modifier, when you click and drag this, notice how this is just gonna show up at frame 100, or actually a little after frame 100, just like this. There's not really anything interesting going on with it. The reason there's nothing interesting going on with it is because this doesn't have enough faces inside of it in order to actually make the faces show up um, the same way that the ones in my Bonnie model were working. So let's say, for example, that we were to duplicate this. So I'll just do a Shift D, move this over, but then for this one, let's tab into edit mode and we're just going to right click and we're just going to subdivide this by we'll say maybe like 10 times something like that and then i'm going to tab back into object mode and notice how this also has a build modifier applied to it well if you look the one on the left doesn't come into being until the very end but the one on the right actually gets you this build modifier effect right so you can see these little parts and pieces coming in a little bit at a time and so um, just know that you need some additional geometry in here to get that effect. And let's say, for example, um, where is my Bonnie model? There we go. Okay, let's turn this on. Let's say that we wanted there to be a more pronounced effect with my Bonnie model, right? So what we could do is this also works with other modifiers in the stack. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to use a subdivision surface modifier on my Bonnie model. Well, what we want to do is we want to make sure the subdivision surface modifier shows up in the stack before the build modifier, so those extra faces are being created. But notice how now, this is actually working on those subdivided surfaces rather than just um, the non-subdivided surfaces that we have in here. So this will give you a more pronounced effect because you're going to have more faces in here. So you can adjust this that way in addition, there's also ways to adjust the order that this is happening in. So for example, if we look at this right now, this is just kind of randomly coming in, right? Like there's not really a whole lot of rhyme or reason to it. It does kind of start um, moving across this object eventually, but first it puts this like random line in here. Well, the reason we've done that is because, or the reason that's happening is because there's not really any order to our object. Well, what we can do is we can tab into edit mode with this object selected. So I'm just gonna tab right here. And you can actually um, affect the order that this effect happens. And so the way that that works is by sorting your elements. And so you can sort your elements by going up into your mesh settings. There's an option for sort elements. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna let you sort everything based on a few different functions. So you can let it sort based on how close things are to your camera in the current view along the Z axis or the X axis. You can also do it by material, by things that you have selected, cursor distance, a lot of different things. I find cursor distance 
gives us the most control over what we're trying to do here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to do a shift, right click, that's gonna place my 3D cursor on this corner, right? Well now, what we wanna do is we wanna go into our mesh settings, we wanna do sort elements, and then we wanna sort these by cursor distance. And so what that means, and when we sort this by cursor distance, make sure you set this to faces rather than vertices, because if you remember, the build modifier is going to affect the faces, not the vertices. And so now what that's gonna do is that's gonna use the point here and the distance from the point in order to set the way that these are created. So now if I tab back into object mode and I look at the build modifier, notice how now this is coming in based on distance from this point right here. So we were able to affect the way that this animation happens using that sort function. And so this also works for things with like the array modifier. So for example, if you look at this brick wall that we have in here, I've created this brick wall by creating a single brick and then using an array modifier in order to place this in here. And then at the end, I have a build modifier. So if you look at this without the build modifier, it just looks like this. I've modeled a single brick. So if I tab in here, you can see that. And the others are just being created by these modifiers. Well, now I can just add a build modifier to the bottom of my stack like this. And we can use this in order to build our brick wall over a hundred different frames. And so notice how there's also an option in here to randomize. And so if you want to, instead of having these come in in a line, like they're doing with the brick wall, if we were to click randomize, this is just gonna randomly bring these faces in just like this. So if you want things to kind of like fade in without them having that linear um, function associated with them, you can check the randomize box. And so there's other interesting functions with this as well. So for example, I've gone through and I've modeled out this framed, um, this wall framing. Well, you could apply the build modifier to this right here And you can see how this will come in and this will bring in the faces associated with these different objects doing that. And you can do different sorting, but you can see how there's a lot of possibilities in here for things like construction animations, other things like that. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. What other stuff would you like to see with the build modifier? Have you used it before? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.